What is the most hated unit in StarCraft 2? If you're a new player or you joined the community already in Legacy of the Void, this question might take some time to answer. But if you asked somebody the same question in 2013, there would be only one answer. The Swarm Host. Swarm Hosts were introduced into the game with the Heart of the Swarm expansion, but we need to understand why they were even created in the first place and what was the thought process behind that. If you haven't seen my previous video about Brutalord Infestors and Patch Zergs, I highly recommend you to do that, but if you don't have much time now, let me make a short summary for you. The Zerg race was the strongest one for the last 10 months prior to Heart of the Swarm release. The balance team was doing its best to fix the issue and they introduced a couple of nerfs to the Infestors as well as new units for other races that could counter this late game composition. For instance, Protoss race got Tempest and Terran got the new 4 cannon shortly before the expansion. Alongside new maps, these changes should have made the Zerg race considerably weaker. But the problem was, there were no other tools for the Zerg race in the late game. And the mid game also got much harder. Now Protoss got the Mothership Core that allowed them to defend the bases, and Terran mech was buffed and made as a good alternative to the bio, which was played most of the time. So Zerg was already a passive race at that point, but now it was even more difficult to break a good defense of other races. The only choice you had was to macro up and wait for the late game, which was also not the best stage for that race, as we already know. So the balance team had to think of something that could potentially gain Zerg the ability to besiege other races and put pressure on them if they were too campy and refused to leave the bases. This way, the Viper was introduced, but the problem was that it was still a late game unit and it didn't appear fast enough for aggressive Zergs to take control of things. And here comes the mighty Swarm Host. This unit was designed specifically as a siege weapon that could help players break enemies' defenses. Back in Heart of the Swarm, it constantly produced waves of locusts that did considerable damage to the enemy. In theory, it was a very interesting concept of free units, but in practice, it was hell on earth. Here's a bunch of these swarm hosts waddling into action here in front of this mighty looking Terran base. They'll just deploy into the ground, set their rally point, and a bunch of these locusts will start swarming into action. All these guys are free. And they're about, what, 90 hit points right now at this point? They do not a great amount of damage, but you can see that bunker's been ripped apart not only by the locusts, but also by the siege tank firing down on it. Give them a few seconds here, and hey, look what they're gonna do. They're gonna do it again. And again, and again, and again. It is the endless Zerg swarm knocking at your front door until you figure out a way to deal with it. Zerg players quickly figured out that why would we even bother to take risks and attack if we have free units? Every engagement that we can have with them is in our favor, and even if our economy is worse, it doesn't matter since we are not losing any money. Zerg players turned the tables with this new unit. Now the best way to play this game was to just make an impenetrable defense and constantly spam with locusts. You needed to survive until you had like 8 or maybe 10 of them, and then you could just hide behind spores, spines and queens. It was also a good idea to have a pack of corruptors and some wipers to deal with flying units. The most skillful players also used the infestors. And a typical game would look somewhat like this. This game. Wait a minute. This is the game that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Wow. Um, <clears throat> Snoot is still mining from that top left base. That's unbelievable. Isn't this creep tumor blocking the hatchery location? Uh... Yes, yeah. yes, it is. It's kind of weird. Oh, oh, fungal, fungal. Oh, yeah, it's no only brought shields down. Oh. Didn't do much. Wait, uh, it doesn't have any more infestors. Oh, oh, Few more pulls. Oh. Pull some straight into those uh, oh. spores. Oh. There's the storms. He's actually going for it. This he's is actually gonna go. No, oh. he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, oh. no, 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 he's not. No, he's not. If he did, ah, if why he did he go did, so he was, far forwards? He was dead if he did. He saw these damn some four void rays. <coughs> four more corruptors. He's got oh no my. Gas. Snoot. Snoot's doing this. Snoot, you're my new favorite player. <laughs> Snoot is doing this. Going a little bit the, in that favor again. The spore crawlers on the gold should be moved now. Spore they should on be the moved gold. towards the right hand side now. Or at least some of Over them. Over here, so you can establish this area and so make he sure he doesn't stop. mine from it. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, I guess first is coming to the left again, so. 
Oh, oh Oracle. Oracle dead. Oh, oh lack of many units right now. Look how starved he is. He burrows everything. He doesn't have vision on this location. They're swinging in. Corruptors are just ignoring the stalkers. Oh my god. And going straight into the tempest. Oh my god. He lays down corruption on quite a few of them. Oh how many does he have left? He's keeping the life with transfuses. Uh, okay, 12 corruptors against seven tempests. Nine corruptors against six tempests. If the tempests die. Oh my god. First is dying. Oh my god. Snoo is double the supply. Oh my god. I can't believe this. What is going on? Wow. It's Snoo. Snoo. You're invited to my house party tonight. Snoo. What time is it? It's midnight. It's midnight. You oh. can come now. Supply. He's about to just make the most epic of runs from the beginning of the lower bracket to the end. He's, He's like at 200 supply. He is more than quadruple his opponent's supply. Did he just pull a high Templar? You can pull whatever you want at this stage. Man. You can, you can do whatever time you night, want, Snoot. You can pull anything. <laughs> All right, he grabs himself a Tempest. Second one as well. There goes the third one. GG! Woo! Congratulations, Snoot! I was slouched throughout all of that. You caught me slouched. He's done it! The problem was, at one point, each side would reach the Tsuk Tsvang position. If you're a Protoss, taking a risk and attacking could be a disaster, because if you make a mistake, the Zerg won't lose anything but three units. And for the Zerg player, there was no need to take risk at all, since you could just slowly drain your opponent of resources and finish him by a thousand small cuts that you make with every attack. So one lost Zealot at a time, for example. Needless to say that the games got very dull and boring, and it also took significantly more time to finish even a single match. Moreover, the same situation could happen in ZVT, but it was a bit less likely, because it was a lot harder to use Marmhorst against Bio due to the DPS of Bio units and their mobility, but players like Snoot still could get away with that. However, as we discussed previously, the balance team wanted to buff Mech and make it a viable choice. So they did exactly that, uh, but Mech was a slow, turtling playstyle, by its nature of course. And now, imagine what happens when a turtling mech meets the turtling zerg with swarm hosts. Unlike in Wings of Liberty, there were of course other ways to play the zerg race, and some maps just didn't fit that swarm host playstyle that well. But most other tactics were less efficient and required some luck or specific circumstances to work for you. For example, you could play mass mutas because they were buffed in the patch and gained the health regeneration ability. However, it's still dependent on the map, the scouting, and many other things. So what eventually happened was, other races had once again two choices to make. Protoss race could try to win in the late game with a lot of AoE damage and some sky units, but the vortex ability of the mothership was removed, so you couldn't catch the Zerg player by surprise. And since late game is not a fair fight anymore, most players resorted to timing pushes, cheeses, and all-ins. The new favorite was the two-base Blink Stalker push. For Terran players, you could simply play Bio, or, alternatively, you could still use your new mech playstyle. A good timing push with Hellbats and tanks could destroy a Zerg player until he is too powerful. And if the game gets to the late game stage, you still got Mass Ravens, and this was just a horrible gaming experience. Bunch ton of BDDs here to keep everything alive, he's... Like, this is why you don't split up your armies! And this could actually be game... Ending now. Like, I, I would like to watch that on his point of view. Just to see his face, because he's going to see that, like, what the fuck? He just lost so many supply. As a result, a lot of players were unhappy with the state of the balance, especially the casual ones. The game became a lot less interesting to play, as well as a lot less entertaining to watch. Many players choose to quit StarCraft 2 for good, or at least until the next patch. But do you think Blizzard rushed and fixed the problem? No, they were very slow with their response. There were some attempts to nerf the Swarm host, of course, but those minor changes couldn't make it a proper unit. If it was too weak, nobody would just use it anymore, and there was just no way around it, no good solution. Finally, after two years of struggles, Blizzard came up with a complete redesign of this unit. From the Siege Ram it transformed into a sophisticated Harass unit that could now send flying locusts. In 2015, the war spirit of StarCraft II Balance came to its end, but so did the popularity of this unit. Nowadays, you can hardly find it usable in most matches. However, that state of the balance did a lot of harm to the community, because many people left StarCraft II and didn't want to put up with that poor balance and really bad game design choices. That's it for our story. 
If you haven't seen this video about Broodlord Investors, check it out. And have a nice day and see you next time.